We set up camp beside the Altunga Hotel and had a bite to eat and then set off on our own journey of exploration. The first stop was the Altunga Historic Museum. From its beginnings in 1887, Altunga was one of the most significant European settlements in Central Australia. Although not as rich as Victorian or Western Australian goldfields, it attracted many people and brought commercial development to this very isolated region. Altunga hides many keys to the everyday life of its past residents. Through the artefacts that were left behind, we can discover how they spent their pastime. Judging from the number of tobacco tins, matchboxes and clay pipes, smoking was very popular. To transport the equipment to Altunga, the machinery was railed to Unadatta, then hauled by 29 camels over a period of four weeks. The isolation of Altunga meant that any ore had to be crushed in a battery on site. By 1980, three private batteries were imported at great expense, but were unable to process the available ore. After a petition from the Altunga miners, the South Australian Government gave approval in June 1896 for a public battery. Problems with roads, fire and lack of tools delayed operations of the battery until February 1898. This five-star battery that you see here was bought from Adelaide in the late 1800s by horse and cart. Next stop was just down the road at the Altunga Government Works. So this is the second one. The second to office. So that would have been his residence in here. The office. And this is where he Then a short drive up the road takes you to the police station. In 1899, 12 years after gold was discovered at Altunga, Constable Charles Johnson arrived with two Aboriginal trackers and proceeded to establish a camp which consisted of a large tent and two canvas covers. Police were initially stationed here to protect the neighbouring pastoral properties from alleged cattle stealing by both miners and Aboriginal people and to assist in the prevention of sly grog selling. Beautiful old verandas on them. In 1912 a new police residence and jail was erected although by that time mining had declined. It remained the district police base until 1944 when it was moved north to Hart's Range. After this time, the condition of the buildings declined as people deliberately vandalised them, looking for the gold falsely rumoured to be hidden in its walls. This is a reconstruction of that police residence and was completed in 1985. So then it was off to find a mine.
We continued on and visited both the Crossroad and White Range cemeteries. Amazingly, the White Range mine is still operational today. After our day of exploring, there was a stake back at camp with my name all over it. After leaving Ruby Gap yesterday morning, we ventured through to Old Tunga and stayed at the old hotel. Um, not open anymore, so it was BYO. At any rate, after another rather cold night, we continue our trip down the binge track. As you can see, it's um, I guess it's probably a bit more the, the amount of traffic that's on it now. It's a little bit better than what I'd consider to be a track. It's got rough patches, but it continues to, to intrigue with all the different picturesque hills and lovely sunsets. So at any rate, we're on our way uh, again to um, Nadala Gorge. To the Nadala Gorge, yeah. First stop. Okay. Then on to Trafina Gorge to camp tonight. This area in the Nadala Gorge is about the Caterpillar Dreaming Story. Arente custodians say that this set of petroglyphs tells the story of the life of two caterpillars, Utnaringacha and Najalaka. This is one of the many caves we've come across. You can actually see this one all black in the top, so it suggests at some point this was a hideout or a home. It's black from the smoke and that fires. Yeah, interesting. And the river runs right beside it. A nice deep hole that would have contained water well after the rains had finished. Quite a bit of work in this rock. I don't know whether we'll be able to see it or not. Next, it was on to Trevina Gorge to set up camp for the night. Trevina Gorge is noted for its sheer quartzite cliffs and river red gum lined watercourses. Two gorges dissect the range, Trevina with its wide views and sandy creek bed and the John Haynes rock hole with steep narrow rock walls. They've made little fences to stop you from getting too close to the edge which is very good in my case. Hmm. Got some work going into those, they've cut those steps made them up so that the climb makes it a bit easier. Put on them. Hats off to them. We decided to just do one of the walks, packed a hiking bag with water and a snack and set off. The Trevina Gorge walk, one hour return, was well worth it. It gives you a perspective on the dramatic gorge country around here. So we're here in the base of the Ross River and we've come across some more petroglyphs carved into the wall of the riverbed. A very enjoyable walk. Well, 
for that or it's going to be really cool one. Well, we're having a bit of a change of plans because <clears throat> we've um, discovered we've got no trailer brakes. Check the car and I think that I think everything's working in the car okay. Um, there were some wires hanging down under the under one of the axles which is one of the leading to the wires to the brake magnets so <clears throat> we're going to see if we can get into our site in um, Alice Springs a day early there's heaps and heaps and heaps of people at this Trevina Gorge which was where we were going to stay so obviously it's about 70 k's <clears throat> east of Alice so it's a bit of a go-to place by the look of it uh, and given that it is Sunday yeah, there's stacks of people about so we're going to head off and hopefully um, we'll give the park a call and um, they can squeeze us in a day early this magnificent tree was on the drive out of the gorge the ghost gum is found in tropical and arid regions of northern australia mainly in the northern territory and inland queensland this very special individual has been measured at 33 meters tall and is estimated to be over 300 years old Just checking on things at home. Cool. Yep, so we had issues with the trailer brakes and uh, this is what we found. wires have severed from the from the magnet on both sides one of them was completely gone this one was just hanging fortunately our good friends at Repco have been able to help us out they're not the off road ones but um, they'll work in preparation for the coming gravel road Liz gets the beverages ready. It's like tucking the children in at night. Cans all repacked in newspaper. Ready for the next leg. For the afternoon, we went out to Andulio oh, Station oh, and tackled the quad bikes. Don't get going yet. Andulia cattle station for the second time. <laughs> this time she's a lot drier than you were here last time. All right. Righto, go and get some dirt on you. Beautiful. Andulia station is the oldest working cattle station in the Northern Territory. 1440 square kilometres of pastoral lease. It has been managed by the Hayes family since 1906 and this quad bike adventure is run by Kath and Robert Frost. The old buffalo grass. It is thought to have been introduced inadvertently to Australia in the 1870s in camel harnesses from Western Asia. Buffalo grasses are native to tropical and subtropical regions of Africa, India and Indonesia. They are used in Australia as a drought resistant pasture grass that thrives in sandy soils and it can be found in areas near Alice Springs and Western Queensland. So it's back to the caravan park for a nice hot shower and ready for our trip further west tomorrow. In the next episode we hit traffic on the Gary Junction Road. 
make our way into Big Sky Country and watch one of the many amazing sunsets. <laughs> 